In this week's video, we're asking this question. Has the evolution of acting styles mirrored the path brands have taken in recent years? Specifically, we're going to explore whether modern brands are adopting a method approach, immersing themselves deeply into their values and customer experiences. Or perhaps we're seeing a new phase of realism where brands are more transparent and relatable than ever before. Or are we now entering a post-realism phase where authenticity is questioned and reimagined? But before we jump into how this applies to branding, let's take a quick journey through the evolution of acting. I'll place some timestamps in the video, so if you want to jump ahead to how this relates to branding specifically, you can do. From the early days of storytelling around the campfire to the grand stages of Greece, acting was all about projection. The actors needed to be larger than life, their gestures and voices exaggerated to reach the entire audience. The focus was on delivering an experience that was both grand and memorable. Then everything changed, and that change was film. Initially, silent films demanded actors to be highly expressive, almost exaggerated, because they couldn't rely on dialogue. With the introduction of sound, the theatrical style persisted. Actors were still larger than life, partly because that's what audiences were used to. Melanie Hamilton, what a surprise to run into you here. However, as film technology advanced, so did the nuances of acting. No longer confined to projecting to the back of the theatre, actors could now convey subtle emotions through close-ups and more intimate performances. One of the most significant shifts in acting came with the advent of method acting, pioneered by practitioners like Lee Strasberg. The idea was to fully immerse oneself in the character to live as they would live and to think like they would think. This approach has given us some of the most iconic performances in cinema history. For example, Robert De Niro famously drove a taxi around New York City to prepare for his role, Taxi Driver. And Daniel Day-Lewis has used method acting for his films My Left Foot and There Will Be Blood. Every day. And more recently, Jeremy Strong has used method acting within the TV show Succession. This is the day we make it happen. But this approach has sparked debate, and it's particularly the conversation around the impact it has on the well-being of the actor. He does get obsessed with the work, and I worry about what it does to him. As the acting has become more immersive, it has blurred the lines between performance and reality, and that's led to potential mental and physical strain on the actor, as well as the crew working on the project. Recently, there's been a shift away from this intense realism of method acting, and we're now seeing a movement towards post-realism, where the focus is on blending reality with surreal, often hyper-stylized elements. Filmmakers like Wes Anderson have championed this style, where the portrayal of reality is intentionally heightened or distorted, which creates a unique narrative experience. This new approach raises interesting questions. For example, does this signal a departure for the need for authenticity? Are we entering a phase where reality is flexible, molded to fit the story, rather than the other way around? So how does this all relate to branding? Well, just as acting styles have evolved, so too have the strategies brands use to connect to their audiences. Brands like Actors started with an over-the-top approach. In the early days of advertising, brands broadcast their messages loudly and universally. Think of the classic Coca-Cola commercials and the Mad Men era of advertising. It's a ritual. You take it, break it, share it, and love it. This was the brand equivalent of theatrical acting, big, bold, and unmissable. Then came the rise of social media in the late 2000s. This fundamentally changed the landscape. Suddenly brands couldn't just speak at customers, they had to be engaging with them directly. And this shift required brands to be more genuine, more in character in a sense, understanding and embodying the values of their audience. This was their method acting moment, where the focus on deeply understanding and reflecting the customer's needs and emotions was paramount. 
Today, many brands have taken this even further. Transparency, authenticity, and ethical considerations are now central to brands' identities. Consumers want to know not just what the brand sells, but also what they stand for. And this mirrors the realism phase in acting. Brands are no longer just selling product, they're selling a story, an emotion, a shared value system. Think of how brands like Patagonia focus on environmental activism, or Ben & Jerry's ice cream is vocal about social justice. These brands have realized that being real is not just a marketing strategy, it's a necessity for connecting today's consumers. But now, with the rapid development of AI and other technologies, we're entering uncharted territory. AI allows to create highly personalized, one-to-one -one interactions at scale, something that's been impossible up to this point. However, this raises the question, will this lead to a new phase of post-realism in branding? In this potential post-realism phase, brands might begin to blur the lines between reality and digital representation, creating experiences that are hyper-personalized yet strangely impersonal. The concern here is whether AI will make all our brand interactions feel the same, efficient but lacking in any genuine human connection. So as we look at acting and branding, it's clear that both have gone on significant transformations in response to cultural and technological shifts. The question now is whether we're moving into a post-realism era, where the boundaries of authenticity are constantly being tested and redefined, or will brands like modern films embrace a more stylized, less real approach in the future? Or will the pendulum swing back towards an even deeper commitment to authenticity? Only time will tell. But what do you think? Do let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and as always, do let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications for future videos. We post videos every week about brand, brand strategy, founder stories, and digital. Until next time, stay curious, and see you in the next one.